so this is the audio player that I've made completely on Flutter. So let's play something in this audio player. Hi friends, I'm Madhavta from Easy Approach and in this video we are going to make our own audio player using Flutter. So first of all let's see what are the dependencies we need to add in order to make this thing happen. So in the pub spec file we need to add these two dependencies. The first one is audio players to enable the support of playing audio in our Flutter application and the second one is the file picker to pick the file from the local device, in this case from the emulator. Now let's see the code of the design of the application that I have done to save the time. So we have this home page widget as the only screen of the application that you can currently see on the emulator as well. And in the build method of this widget, I have used a scaffold widget and in the body I have used a stack widget to overlap the audio player and the background image that you can see. Now let's see what's inside this container that is actually the widget of audio player. So inside the container I have given 80% of the screen width to this audio player and I've also given some height. I've also given the margin as well to place the audio player on the place where you can currently see on the screen. I've also applied some border radius to make it a little rounder and make it a little more cool. And in the child I have used raw widget and in the raw widget I have used two different icon button. One is for play, second is for stop separated with the size box with a 16 pixels of width. And at the loss I have also used this floating action button as well. And now let's uh, make it functional because we have covered uh, what we have to add. Uh, as a dependencies and we have covered the design as well. Now we can make it functional. First of all we have to add the functionality in the app that whenever the user would tap on this floating action button he can select the audio from the local device and that he wants to play in the app. And for this purpose we added file picker dependency. Now let's do the code for adding this functionality. So first of all what I'm doing, I'm making a string variable to store the path of the file that would be selected by the user so that we can use it to play it later. So let's give some name like file path and we are going to use file picker to let user pick some file from the, from the local device. And inside it we have a future get file path that returns a string value. So as we are dealing with future, we have to use here await and since we are using await, we need to add async as well. So this would not just let user pick the file, but it would also store the path of the selected file in this variable file path. So now we have the file and now we have to play this file. So for playing this file, we first have to make the instance of audio player that's actually from the audio player uh, package that we have added. So let's come at the top and make an instance of audio player. So you can give any name and you have to initialize it with the audio player. So that's what you have to do. And now you can use this audio player to play this file that, have, uh, that, uh, that was selected by the user. Now let's use the audio player. And inside it we have a future to play the audio. So you can use this play. And inside it you have to give the file path. So we have it stored in the file path. And as this is a local file, so we have to use uh, this, we have to define this uh, bool variable that is, is local. So if you are running a local file as we are doing right now, so we have to give here true. We can also store the status of this uh, play future as well, uh, that it returns one whenever it, it runs the file successfully or it plays the file successfully. So what we can do, we can make an integer variable and we can give the name status and it's a, it's a future. So we have to use here await as well. And now if the status is one, so it means it has run the file successfully. So now before testing this, uh, what we can do, we can make one Boolean uh, variable because we can use it uh, later. 
So let's give it is playing. So whenever the audio player uh, will be running, will be playing some audio, we will uh, set it to true, else it would be false. So initially it would be false because uh, whenever the application would be open, there would be no audio that would be running by the audio player. But when the status would be one uh, from here, so we can set it using set state and we can make it uh, true. And we will use this flag uh, in, in uh, later functionalities as well. Now let's uh, run this file. Uh, now let's run this application to test whether it's working or not. So the application is running and now we can test it by tapping on this floating action button. So this would let us use the files from the media. So I've downloaded a couple of files, so I'm choosing one of them. So this should run uh, the file. So it's a uh, little quiet initially. But now you can hear it. So it's working. So this is how you can play the file, the audio, using audio player package. Uh, but so far we haven't added the controls over the audio player. Like we cannot stop it, we cannot resume it. And we can also uh, not see the time as well. So we are going to add these things. So first of all, uh, we are going to implement play and stop. So because we cannot uh, stop this. Uh, so what I'm doing, I'm restarting the application to stop the audio. So first of all, we are going to implement the stop control. So inside the on press of this stop button, we are going to use audio player. And inside it, we have a, we have a future that is a stop. So we will use this. And now after this, as uh, after uh, the audio is stop, so there will be no audio is playing. So we can set the is playing flag to false because the audio is not being played. Now let's restart the application. And let's again choose the file. So now the file is playing. And we have to test the stop button. So you can hear the voice and now I am tapping on the stop button. Let it be a little louder. Yeah. So you can see I am I have tapped on the button and now there is no voice. So this is how you can implement the stop button. And now we are going to implement the pause and resume uh, button. Now before implementing the pause and resume uh, functionality, we first have to show here uh, the icon based on the current status of the audio player. If the audio player is playing some audio, we have to show here the resume button instead of playing button. And when the audio is not playing uh, some audio and it is in the pause and stop state, we have to show here the play button. So for this, we can use the is playing flag. So what we can do, we can check here is playing flag. And if it is uh, true, uh, it means it is playing the audio. So we can show icon. Uh, that's actually the pause icon So here it is else if it's not playing then we can show the play uh, Arrow button that you can currently see on the emulator as well So this is how you can show the icon dynamically based on the status the current status of the audio pair And now let's implement uh, the pause and resume uh, functionality So for this firstly, we have to check if the audio is playing because this button would react differently in different uh, uh, situation. So if it is playing the audio, we have to pause the audio. So for this, we can again use the audio player and inside it, we have a future pause. And after pausing uh, the voice or the audio, we can set uh, the is playing flag again to false because now it's not playing the audio. And else, if it is not playing the audio, 
then what we can do we can we can uh, resume the audio for this we have uh, resume function or future and after that as now the audio is playing so we can set the is playing flag to true because it was or it was uh, uh, false when we have uh, entered in this case so now uh, let's see if it is working so just reload the application and now let's uh, tap on this button and this time I'm selecting uh, the other sound that I have not selected so far so this one so you can see as I play the sound uh, the audio the uh, the audio player button that's here uh, is changed from play to resume and if I click here you can see the audio is stopped or pause actually and the button is also changed now let's click again so you can see it's now again started and same with this if I click on this stop button you can see the the button is changed now it's uh, it's showing the play button and now if I click on this it start the audio from the very beginning rather than uh, resuming it so this is how you can implement uh, the audio player with playing the audio and with uh, some controls like play button and resume and stop and at the last we are going to implement the timer so we will show the timer here uh, that would show the current time uh, of the audio along with the total time of the audio so for this first of all let's uh, make two string type variables so first of all is for current uh, time and the second one is for complete time and initially I'm setting it to uh, zero second something like this Now this audio player package provides us some stream for listening current uh, playing time of the audio and total time of the audio and we are going to use those streams. For finding the current playing time of the audio we have different stream provided by uh, the audio players package. So we can just subscribe to the stream and listen to the values coming through it. So first of all we have to use audio player and inside it we have a stream on audio position stream. So that would return us the duration. So we can listen to this stream and inside it we would receive the instance of duration, the current duration of the audio that, that would be playing. And now inside it we can just use set state and we can initialize the current time with the duration and we have to change it to a string so this is how you can get the current time of the playing audio and now for complete time of the audio we again have another stream provided by this package so this is called duration on duration change because the duration is changed every time whenever uh, some new audio is provided to the audio player so that is why they provided us a stream so that we can listen to the duration change whenever a uh, user change the audio and inside it we again receive the duration instance but this would only uh, provide us the value whenever uh, the user would select some other other audio and same inside that we can use set state and now we have to use the complete time instead of current time because we are getting the complete duration and we can just use the duration and we can convert it to a string and now at the loss we have to uh, use these we have to use these two uh, strings in form of text widget so I'm using here text widget and first of all I'm giving here current time and for making it a little prominent I'm using text style and just increasing the font to 8 so let's make it 700 and let's duplicate this one and now we have to use uh, the complete time and let's make it a little lighter 
And inside it, let's uh, make another text uh, widget to separate these things uh, with the, uh, I don't know what it, uh, what it is called. So this is it. And now let's uh, refresh this thing. Sorry, we have to uh, restart the application since we have uh, worked inside the init state. So you can see the application is restarted and it's showing the default time that's actually 00. zero. So we have initialized with 00. zero. Now let's select some audio. So I'm going to select the first audio. So it should change the time. So you can see it's changed the time but uh, it's not coming properly. You can see the duration, complete duration is 2 seconds. Sorry, 2 minutes and 33 seconds. And current timer is showing 12 seconds. But it's showing the milliseconds as well. So we have to get rid of this. So let's uh, stop it first. And what we can do uh, after this uh, we can use dot split and we will split it by dot so this would split the string uh, this whole string into two part the first one uh, would be the string that's coming uh, that's actually before the dot and the second one would be the string that's actually after the dot so this whole thing would provide us the list of two strings the first one would be the string that is coming uh, before the dot and the second one would be that is coming after the dot. So we can uh, just choose the one that's coming before the dot by uh, giving here the index 0. And similarly we can do it uh, with this. So we just we can just paste it. And now let's restart the application. So now the application is restarted and now let's change uh, one of the files from the audios that I've saved. So I'm choosing this one. And you can see it's running the audio and it's showing the timer in correct format. So we have implemented uh, the audio player and we have uh, the controls over the audio player like we can stop, we can resume, pause and we have a timer and it's completely a great uh, audio player we have made uh, using Flutter. So we can uh, pause the audio, we can resume the audio, we can stop the audio, and you can see when I start again, it, the timer starts from the zero. So, for, so this is for it from this video. Uh, in this video, we have learned how to make audio player using Flutter. We have implemented some of the controls uh, over the audio player like play resume and we have also implemented the timer as well so this is it from this video uh, if you like the video please give a big thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed the channel please subscribe the channel and please try the other videos as well you would find it so useful and please at the last share the videos with those who want to learn flutter with easy approach and i want everyone to be safe from the coronavirus and i hope we would inshallah uh, overcome this soon so thank you for watching